Hi, my name is Aiden and we're back with a new screencast. So today I want to talk a bit about how to and not to use Angular and ASP.NET together or really it's uh, any a, a single page application framework. It doesn't necessarily need to be Angular 2. And if you like what I do, make sure to follow me on Twitter, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So I get requests to do screencasts on how to use Visual Studio and Angular together. And I have a couple of popular screencasts that got uh, several thousand views and I'm gonna link to them in the description. But I really got an interesting question from this guy I was on vacation with and he asked me why should you use Angular 2 and ASP.NET together? Which is a really good question because honestly I don't think you should mix front end and back end into, into one solution. And I know there's gonna be a lot of opinions about this so let's make a list with with pros and cons uh, for why you should use uh, ASP.NET together with Angular. Uh, don't misunderstand me, I, I totally think that you can use ASP.NET ASP.NET or ASP.NET Core for the backend, I just don't think that you should use ASP.NET to serve your front-end application which could be an Angular or Aurelia of, or any kind of single page application uh, framework that's gonna, that's gonna live in the browser. If we think about it, we usually go out of our way to try to build modular and composite applications and it's not always the most trivial architecture to get these things both for web and desktop to, to get it up and running. So why should we mix front-end and back-end into one single, uh, one single solution? So let's create a list with a plus sign and then let's use the red marker since I have a red marker uh, to do a cons side and and obviously I want to have a civilized discussion about this so let me know your opinion but let's build my uh, my pros and cons list uh, on why we should or should not use ASP.NET together with Angular or at least not ASP.NET to serve our Angular application. The first pro uh, reason I can think of is that you don't need to care about a uh, course uh, cross-origin resource sharing. So I'm gonna put down course here in the plus in the plus column. And what I mean by that is when you do a request for a resource from your front end, from your Angular application or whatever framework you're using, uh, you don't need to care about uh, cross-origin resource sharing. You can just go ahead and access uh, the endpoint uh, on the same um, on the same base uh, base URL. So we can simply do a get and let's say you want to uh, get a person, you can just do a get to API and then slash person. So this is pretty convenient. Uh, as I said, you don't need to think about what's in front of this API or person. It's just, you can just go ahead and do a get to this endpoint and it will just work. Uh, so the contrary to this is to separate the backend from the from the front end and then you need to provide the entire URL and then you need to handle cro cross origin resource sharing and think about uh, uh, cross site scripting attacks and things like that. So it's really convenient, you don't need to think about course. But on the con side, you got really tight coupling between your front and back end. It's hard to have separate release cycles when you have everything in the same solution. So I'm gonna go ahead and put down coupling uh, on, the, on the con side. So now we're one for one, but if you think about it, uh, coupling really uh, is uh, so these aren't weighted one-to-one. -one. I think if you just have this list by itself, uh, having this tight coupling, uh, that reason alone uh, is reason for me to separate the front end from the back end. So what we need to ask ourselves is, what do we need to serve our front end application? We just need a web server that can serve the files to a browser and that's it. So you think about it, why should you even use ASP.NET just to serve a couple of static files? That doesn't make sense. So on the con side, I'm gonna go ahead and put uh, that it's overkill. And I've actually done 
screencasts on how to use cookie-based authentication by piggybacking uh, on ASP.NET's cookie-based authentication from a single page application. And in that case, I was using Angular as I usually do in my screencasts. But that's not really good practice. What you want to do when you use uh, when you have single page applications, you want to use token based authentication. So that could really go uh, both, uh, so that could go on both sides. So it's really convenient, it's easy to get cookie based authentication up and running. But on the other hand, you should use token based authentication. It's not sane to use cookie based authentication when using single page applications. So I'm going to go ahead and put down authentication on both sides. And one more thing I want to talk about is tooling. So even though Visual Studio and VS Code is getting there with the tooling for the, fr for the front, front end development, uh, they are still lagging behind. They got a task, task running explorer that can run Gulp and, and Bower tasks. Uh, but really the front end community has evolved past that. Uh, Visual Studio is already lagging behind. So I'd like to put tooling on the con side for using Visual Studio together with ASP.NET to serve a single page application. So, so this is my list and tooling is really a heavy point for me. Uh, as I said, uh, I've even done a screencast, I think it's my previous or the one before that, where I take a look at uh, Angular CLI, which is an excellent tool for building the front-end application, and you can use any editor of choice. Of course, you can use Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code or Brackets or Sublime or, or whatever editor you want uh, to develop a front-end application completely separate from the back-end. So my take on this is, don't simply use ASP.NET to serve your static files uh, when you try to serve a single page application to the browser. That's totally overkill. You want to decouple the front end from the back end. So I really don't see uh, why you should keep these two together in one, uh, in one, in one solution. Uh, by decoupling them, you can have you can have separate uh, release life cycles. Of course, you can solve that in other ways as well. But I really don't see why I should keep them together. Of course, as I said, it's convenient. Uh, you don't need to think about course. You can just go ahead and access resources. But that alone really isn't a reason for why you should use ASP.NET to serve. Uh, your uh, your front end and another reason that just popped into my head now is that obviously you don't want to add unnecessary overhead when serving uh, the front end application so even though ASP.NET Core is really fast uh, uh, compared to the traditional ASP.NET MVC framework it's still unnecessary to have that uh, middleware just to serve your files you just want a web server to serve the static files and that's it you're done Having that said, I still like to use ASP.NET Core and use Visual Studio to build my backend. So uh, that's still my preferred way of going. But I moved from keeping everything in one solution to have them separate. So let me know what your take on it is uh, in the comments or shout out to me on Twitter and we can have a discussion there. And as always, have a nice day guys and make sure to subscribe. Bye.